Ezekiel saw the wheel. This is the wheel he said he saw. These are unidentified flying objects that people say they are seeing now. Are they proof that we are being visited by civilizations from other stars? Or just what are they? The United States Air Force began an investigation of this high strangeness in a search for the truth. What you were about to see is part of that 20-year search. Eastern Kentucky, 0416 hours, 14 July. Charleston, West Virginia, 0437 hours, 14 July. Central Virginia, 0502 hours, 14 July. Glad you could make it. I tried your barracks where they find you. In love. Still or again? Constantly. They call Libby? On her way. You know, Mage, I knew it. 
told you last night Venus was going to be in full bloom. Yeah, I didn't know you were talking about the sky. <laughs> Very good, sir. I like that. What we got? A farmer named Anderson and his wife saw a light dancing in the sky at about 0415. Eastern Kentucky, 10 miles south of Flatridge. Any confirms? Not yet. I called Fort Campbell. They dispatched an intelligence team to interview. They'll teletype us. Next, about 0440, truck driver on Route 119 just south of Charleston, West Virginia, says something came out of the sky, grabbed his truck, and shook it like a baby's rattle. Something shook his truck? A call came from Charleston General Hospital. They had to put him under sedation. Good morning. Hi, Libby. Good morning. Where is it? Talk about timing. Blue book. Check out those two sightings and see if we've got anything in between. Yes, sir. Go ahead. See if we got ourselves any nice, shy folks who saw something and didn't think it was worth reporting. Let's just hope there's none of those folks from the Laughing Academy. Thank you, sir. A police captain in Esterbrook, Virginia, a lady called in, said a flying saucer landed in her front yard about 5 o'clock this morning. Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia. They've had a busy morning. Silver Hill radar site, Washington, D.C., 0602 hours, 14 July. Hey, Gus, a Caribbean island, 10 letters. Um, hey, you got something? Thought you said we'd have no traffic for another 20 minutes. I did. I'll say it again. Air Atlantic 52 from Kansas City, ETA, our control zone 0622. ETA's now 18 minutes. Must have caught a monster of a tailwind. If he did, he lost it somewhere. Moving slower now. I make him just under 200 miles an hour. Ah, uh, it's too slow for a 727. That can't be our commercial. Probably some cowboy coming back from a party. Didn't file a flight plan. That's no weekend flyer. I painted big and solid, Jerry. Air boss, I'm painting a target bearing 275 degrees. No reported traffic in that area. Roger. Give me distance and course. I'm on a 100-mile scale. I read 90 miles, steering 089 degrees. Right. Work up his ground speed. Radar. Need altitude on a bogey at 90 miles. Coming in on a 278-degree radial. Gus, you sure your bogey is not Atlantic 5-2? We'll make sure. Washington Center to Atlantic 5-2. Washington Center, over. Roger, Washington. This is Air Atlantic 5-2. Go. Uh, we're painting a target approximately 80 miles from us, closing slowly. Do you see anything out there, over? Negative, Washington. We see nothing. We show 145 miles from you on flight plan and schedule, over. Roger, can you give me your altitude and airspeed, over? 52 here, flight level 330, speed 295 knots. Inbound, Nottingham fixed, 278 radio. Atlantic 52, squawk 2438, over. Roger. Squawking 2438. Atlantic 52 is still way out of range. We still got our unknown. Radar, still waiting for a readout on our bogey. Roger, thanks. Our unknown is at 6,000 feet. Let's ask Atlantic 52 to take another look, see. A real careful look. This is Washington Center to Atlantic 5-2. We confirm your flight level 330. Start your descent to flight level 200. Report out of 330, over. Roger, Washington. Atlantic 5-2. Coming out of flight level 330 right now. Kind of uh, early, aren't we good, buddy? Over. Fly now 270 Radial Nottingham. We want you south of present course. We'll turn you shortly and have you over the Oxon fix. Well, you approach the runway 36. When you level at 200, look for visual at 10 o'clock low. Over. Roger, Washington. What exactly are we looking for? You tell us. We still paint that same unknown at 6,000. Bearing 279 degrees, eyeball carefully. Just smoking seatbelt, sir. All right, Roger. 
you're watching them at flight level 200 right now and experiencing some turbulence. Who should tell us about that, good buddy? Over. Five two, we have no report of any turbulence. Over. Roger, Washington. We believe we see, uh... Again? You see what, 5-2? I don't know. Looks like a big ball of light hanging in the sky below us. More like a football. Shall we go down and take a closer look? Negative, 5-2. You've got a load of passengers want to get home without a side trip. Continue your approach to runway 36. Contact approach control now, 217.4. Roger, Washington. Will do. Morning, Charlie. Morning. How'd you like to start your day with a real keen problem? Yours or mine? Mine now. Yours maybe. We have an unidentified slow mover at 6,000. Confirmed by a visual sighting from a commercial airliner. What do you see? A blob of light. But it's moving in our control zone. Just one? Boss, you better come over and take a look at this. So what's the matter? This thing just took off straight up at about 1,000 miles per hour. Is it still climbing? No, sir. The radar height finder indicates the target's hanging at 20,000. Hanging? Yes, sir. Now, I paint ground speed at just under 100 knots an hour. There's no plane, nothing, that can operate at 20,000 feet at under 100 an hour. That's close to hovering. You're so right. Now, stay on it. Build and maintain a 20-mile buffer zone around that UFO. No more observations from commercial aircraft or anybody else except military interceptors. <laughs> Washington. We paint a UFO entering our control region. No flight plan, no radio response. Roger. Course and altitude. Flight level 200-278 radio. Uh, maneuvering erratically. Estimate it could be over any DC target in 20 seconds. Roger. Tell Andrews to intercept and identify. Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland. 0617 hours, 14 July. Delta Red 2, continue. 
Continue intercept. Delta Red 2, eight firm. of target. Confirmed? Negative. Negative. I still have a lock on. Delta Red 2, what do you see? I see them. We repeat. Delta Red 2, what do you see? Over. service ceiling. He can't be climbing straight up. No, Charlie. He's going straight down. Seven five zero hours, 14 July. Anyway, I, I was beat. I, I couldn't even see through the windshield. So I pulled off onto the shoulder to take a break, you know. I'm just about to light up a smoke. When, when, I, when I see this light, you know, like a, like a hunk of fire. And it was barreling right at me like a red-hot bowling ball. thing I know, I, I wake up here. Major Gatlin, your secretary is calling, long distance. Excuse me, I'll be right back. <laughs> this, this is kind of crazy, huh, Sarge? I, I mean, the doctors will tell you. Now, I was not drinking. I mean, no pills, no nothing. Mr. Burke, is there a possibility that your truck was hit by lightning? Lightning? 
Come on, I've seen lightning hit trees, houses, maybe a hundred times. I mean, it, it's zap and done. No, sir, this thing came right at me like it had a mind of its own. Harry, we'll see you, yeah? It, it came right at me, Sarge. Yes, sir. Thank you. It knew what it was doing. Silver Hill radar picked up a UFO this morning. Oh, I'm getting that feeling. Mm -hmm. It's starting to grow big. Libby will call the Carlisle woman in Virginia who said she saw the saucer land and postpone our interview. We've been ordered to Washington. Right now? Andrews sent up two interceptors. One of them reported he'd seen an unknown up close. Next, he went down at Mach 1.5. 1,100 miles an hour. He must have made a real tall hole. Andrews Air Force Base. 0915 hours. 14 July. on Gatlin, Project Blue Book. Coleman, Delta Red leader. I'm Graham, sir. Delta Red 2. Who was he? Gary McNair, first lieutenant. Remains have been sent to that lodge. Where'd you find his body? Strapped in the cockpit. Got any early ideas on what happened to him, Captain? Not yet. They don't have very much to work with. If I could have stayed with him, maybe we'd know. Why did you abort? Why had to, sir? Hydraulic failure, lost pressure. McNair married? Yes, sir. No children. We haven't been able to find the plane's canopy. If it blew at that height, it could be anywhere. Why should it? He didn't eject. No. And that's a very large why not. His ejection mechanism was sound. No failure there. But if he lost his canopy at 60,000... That's right at the aircraft service ceiling. Is he some kind of hot dog? No, sir. I checked that. His rating was excellent. Then it's a good bet he must have been chasing something at that altitude. I understand that National Airport reported to Silver Hill Radar that they had identical readings on that unknown. Is that confirmed? Confirmed, sir. There's no canopy, so we obviously lost it. The depressurization at 60,000 hits them like a blunt instrument and it's all over. Yes, sir. Might have happened that way. Yeah, might have. I think we've got to do better than that. Let's find that canopy. <laughs> Washington, D.C., 1219 hours, 14 July. Gary James McNair, 26 years old. Joined the Air Force after four years at Cal Berkeley. When was his last physical? Seven weeks ago. Including psychiatric? Routine. You beginning to think he might have blown it up there? I don't know. He reported chasing a target when ground radar showed nothing. You tell me, Harry. Air Force 19, this is Andrews Motorpool. 19, go ahead. We have a telephone patch for Major Gatlin from Captain Graham. Affirmative, go ahead. Gatlin here. Graham, sir. We found that F-106 canopy four miles from the crash site. It's in the lab now. Outstanding, Captain. How soon can you have it for us? We've got to make dye tests, Magnaflex. We need a day, sir. Can you make it any sooner? No, sir. Not if you want qualified answers. Sorry. All right, thanks, Captain. 10-4. Ever think of returning, Major? We could open up a live bait store in Death Valley.
The chaplain and the base commander were here this morning. I know it's very difficult for you, but we have to ask you some questions. If you could just tell us how your husband felt yesterday. We're just trying to reconstruct your husband's frame of mind when he got in that airplane this morning. My husband is dead. Now you leave me alone. Miss McNair, we're just trying to determine if... Something happened up there, didn't it? You're hiding something from me. You, you, you'd better tell me what you're hiding from me. You tell me. You tell me what killed my husband. Andrews Air Force Base. 0916 hours. 15 July. The cracks marked in green indicate those fractures we believe were caused when the canopy struck the ground. The ones marked in red we believe occurred during flight. Die tests are not infallible, am I right? Yes, sir. They run about 75% accurate. It's that other 25% we're interested in. Yes, sir. The pilot did not eject. He didn't blow the canopy. Yet it was separated from the aircraft during the flight. We found it four miles from the crash site. Sir, what caused it to separate during the flight? Simple loss of pressure. The canopy fractured, cracked. It was ripped right off the aircraft. What caused it to fracture? Structural fatigue? Mm, no, sir. Not according to our periodic maintenance check two weeks ago. The aircraft had eight flights prior to the crash. No write-ups. Then, sir, what caused the canopy to crack during the flight? This piece of hardware fell 60,000 feet to the ground. The Major said it. Die tests are not infallible, but that's what happened. Has to be. Has to? What else could it be, Major? North Central Virginia, 10.05 hours, 15 July. And then it settled down. Right here. There's the same flying saucer I read about in the newspapers, the one over our nation's capital. Your pilot must have been unfriendly. He had to be. Else they never would have shot him down. No one is saying the pilot was shot down, Mrs. Carlyle. Everybody knows that. And that's exactly what I told those reporters. It landed here, ma'am? Yes, sir. Right here in Estabrook, Virginia. No, ma'am. I mean, did it land in this particular spot? Not really. It never really seemed to touch the ground. Mrs. Carlyle, would you please tell us exactly what you saw? Yes. I'm happy to. I was asleep, and then I was awake. And there was no sound. No sound at all. And I was drawn to the window. Now, don't ask me why. And then I saw...
quickly as it came. It was gone. Why did you say, no, I am not afraid, thank you? Oh, because he spoke to me. I didn't hear the words, but I understood as if he did. He told me they were visitors. And they meant us no harm. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I felt wonderful after they left off. Tingly and excited, full of energy. Oh, excuse me. That's telephone. Well, yes, excuse ma'am. me, gentlemen. Let's take a sample. Check it for radiation. Do you believe her? I don't know what to believe, Harry. I don't know what other people see. I don't know what that dead pilot saw on his radar that people on the ground didn't see. Or what he saw in the air that made him fly at it. Or what happened to him because he saw it and the rest of us didn't. You know, I'm coming to one real conclusion about this job. What's that? We got more unanswered questions than a Senate subcommittee. Harry, check on those construction workers and have a talk with them. Check on Andrews Metro. Pull together a weather profile from Kentucky through the crash site, including any activity over Charleston, West Virginia. You got it, but where's that going to take us? Maybe someplace we haven't been. Oh, Major, this is McNair. Please come in. Have a seat. Major, they've sealed the casket. We're just trying to make it easy for you. Then make it easy. Let me see my husband's body. This is McNair. Your husband's aircraft hit the ground over a thousand miles an hour. I don't think you want to see him. Not according to the autopsy report. A newspaper man came to see me after you left. He's been following these UFO things for years. He says that my husband could have been snatched right out of that plane before it ever crashed. He says that the Air Force is afraid to admit that it's helpless against some power from another world. Now that Carlisle woman in Virginia, she saw the thing. He's using you. Believe me, I've seen it before. Hang on to your husband's memory. Don't turn it into a sideshow. I just want to know what happened to Gary. I think something might have happened to his aircraft. How, Major? They're still machines. That's it? That's all you've got to tell me? That's all we know so far. Mrs. McNair. All that newspaper man will tell you is what you want to hear. Maybe. But not what you want to read. I promise you. Major? Major Gallon? You're wanted at the Pentagon. ID will be returned to you when you leave. Your badge, Major? Brigadier General Colburn will escort you from here, sir. Good day, sir. Follow me, Major. Stand behind me, please. Sir? Major Gatlin, Project Blue Book. All right now, Major. Please be good enough to tell us what in the hell is going on. No definite explanation, sir. Not yet. Your opinion, Major? Was there something up there? I don't know, sir. I know there was one object sighted. There were no prior sightings here in the Washington area. One UFO could mean a reconnaissance mission. The next question would be reconnaissance of what? When this was first reported, we upgraded some of our air defense units to a high state of readiness. I ask you now, Major Gatlin, in your view, does this UFO sighting pose a threat to our national security? Until we investigate further, I cannot say that it does not. Are there any other opinions before I advise? Gentlemen, when we first initiated this Blue Book program, we did so to avoid technological surprise and to properly evaluate our threat analysis. Major? Yes, sir. Until you and your people have had further opportunity to investigate these UFO sightings here over Washington... I'm going to put us on a standby to upgrade our defense posture. Agreed? Yes, sir. This is John W. 
In view of the current unknown sightings and in the event that they persist, I would like to advise that effective now, we will remain on standby condition to bring all air defense interceptor units east of the Mississippi to a higher state of readiness. We will stand ready to upgrade to DEFCON 3. That is correct. Gentlemen, stand by to move to a 15-minute alert. Is that your leader deplaning the Pentagon Express? That's him. Been down to operations, right? About that Washington jazz, them UFOs. That's what he's been talking about, right? Uh-uh, wrong. He was down there getting you the good conduct medal for tending to your own business. operation. Got everything east of the Mississippi on the verge of a 15-minute alert. Tell me about those construction workers. Well, the first thing they saw were the two F-106s, Delta Red Leader and McNair, flying formation. One aircraft, Delta Red Leader, peeled off, leaving McNair. He began a series of acrobatics. According to the two construction guys, he was in a real dogfight. Only one thing missing, the enemy. McNair was all by himself up there. Then suddenly he went into a steep climb, straight up. A few seconds later, they saw McNair again, heading straight down. They see anything else? They saw the flame from the crash and they heard the double sonic boom. Well, if we believe them, then why shouldn't we? Then those construction men didn't see the same thing that McNair thought he saw. Well, maybe Lieutenant McNair saw something that wasn't where he saw it. Did you get that weather profile from Andrews Metro? Yes, sir, you ask and you got. Skew T log P tells us there was a well of an inversion all the way from Kentucky through the crash site. Heavy isolated thunderstorm activity smack over Charleston, West Virginia. You have a rush? What's a rush? Gamblers talk when you feel you're getting lucky. I'd call it a notion. Well, where's your notion taking us? Silver Hill Radar. I'll brief you on the way. Computers figure out the exact elevation angles from the UFO on your radar scopes to the ground receiver here. Why? Because maybe the signal bounced. Say again? Bounced or reflected. There was a heavy temperature inversion from 6 to 20,000 feet all the way from Kentucky through the crash site, including isolated thunderstorms over the Charleston, West Virginia area. Now we got our copy of SKU T, Log P. Just what are you saying? We're saying that maybe, just maybe, your signal bounced off that inversion, hit something on the ground and came back to you the same way. No sale. Is it possible? Let me ask you, that pilot locked onto something up there and he died trying to prove it. We had a visual sighting from a commercial aircraft. Andrews radar, national airports and ours. We all painted the same bogey. Are you saying we're all wrong? We're asking you to tell us. Well, it'll take time to work out those elevations. If it's even possible. Look, sir, the Air Force is sitting on the edge of a third stage alert. Now, if there was or is anything up there, we damn well have to know, and now. We'll go after it, Major. What is a one in a million shot? That's all we need, just that one. Stand behind me, gentlemen. Major Gatlin, Sergeant Harry Fitz, Project Blue Book. Major, we've reviewed your findings concerning the various reported sightings and the McNair incident. Anything further to add? No, sir. All right. Scrub the standby condition, return all units to normal posture, defense condition five. Yes, sir. All right, gentlemen. Take it to the people. Our investigations lead us to believe that you people may have seen reflected light. The reflection could have been caused by a rare weather condition that existed that morning. Experts call it a temperature inversion. The actual source of that light could have been many miles from your farm here. How is that? Have you ever shined your flashlight into a mirror and seen it reflect on an opposite wall?
The wife don't believe you. I can't figure out the ignition here. But it sure ain't been the same since that night. That may have something to do with what we believe happened to you on the night of the 14th. Oh? How so? You remember how severe the storm was that night? There was a great deal of electrical activity all around the Charleston area. We think you may have witnessed a very rare weather phenomenon. Not many people have seen it, but it does exist, and it could be what you saw. Whatever it was, it knew what it was up to. We examined your truck while you were in the hospital. We found burn marks on the hood. Yeah, I noticed them. You could have been struck by ball lightning. Never heard of it. It's extremely rare, but it's been known to occur in heavy electrical storms. Scientists tell us that ball lightning has been known to cut wire fences, explode in chimneys, chase people, even find its way into houses through keyholes and cracks in the floor. My goodness. Tell me, uh, either one of you ever seen it? No, sir. Never have. Don't. There's no way we can tell you that you did not see what you tell us you saw. However, we found no physical evidence to confirm your sighting. Well, I don't need any proof. I saw what I saw. Yes, ma'am. Well, we found no evidence of radiation here. Now, what's that supposed to mean? The machine you say you saw would have to be powered by some means. The most likely possibility would be a system that would leave behind traces of radioactivity, to the best of our knowledge. Uh-huh. To the best of our knowledge. Why? We didn't use it to get to the moon. No, ma'am. But we did leave evidence of our visit behind. Because we didn't have the means to bring back all those expensive gadgets. Now, did we? Since we didn't use atomic energy, why should we believe that they do? Isn't it possible they could be ahead of us? The great distances that would have to be traveled to reach our planet would require a propulsion system far more sophisticated than we now know. We can only assume that it could be some form of atomic power. There you go again, Major. Assuming. Without positive physical evidence, we have no choice. Well, neither do I. And I have all the positive physical evidence I need. It landed right there. I saw it. And it left without leaving a trace of anything behind. Now, let's have some more lemonade. I assume my invitation had something to do with this morning's newspaper. We read it. A small story on page 14. Something about Pilot's wife refuses to blame the Air Force. I think they mentioned your name. Are you all right now? The funeral was yesterday. No, I can handle it. You know what I cry about now? That we didn't have a baby. At least one. It's gonna hurt for a long time. Do you know anything more about what happened to Gary? A little. A couple of airline pilots may have seen what your husband saw, but we can't be sure. We believe we're dealing with a temperature inversion that created a series of reflections that were transmitted from a far distant point. I don't understand. We think Lieutenant McNair saw something, but he wasn't sure what he saw, even though the radar scopes indicated something up there, at least for a period of time. Those radar scopes and the airliner saw something, but we're not certain what they saw. That temperature inversion could have caused a reflected light from a distant ground source. But he didn't know what he was seeing. Is that what you're saying? If the Major or I had been up there, it's entirely possible that we would have seen the same thing. And we wouldn't have known. There's a great deal about weather phenomena that we don't know. But we're learning. 
The radar. I still don't understand how it could be wrong. Radar is not infallible. There are known cases where it's been fooled before. However, our computers do tell us that that radar signal would present what would appear to be a moving solid target due to that abnormal weather condition. If the signal was misdirected due to the temperature inversion. If, Major? If. That's as close as we can come. How many UFO sightings have you investigated? We've lost count. The project has looked into over 12,000. And I suppose a fair number of them are unexplained. Yes, ma'am. Roughly 30%. Well, thank you for the dinner. It was very thoughtful. My husband, Major. Are you satisfied? No, I'm not. Thank you. Cold. 